from American actors who became governors, the former later elected president, the latter known for the phrase, I'll be back, to Chima and Chinua, two of Africa's most famous authors who, though not related by some freaky coincidence, lived in the same house several years apart, and sadly, things did fall apart. To American, T. Ribs and German, M. Schumacher, Formula One aficionados, born on the same day. From America's first black ballerina to Robert Ballard. From Indian author, teacher of yoga, BKS in Yenga, who reminds us that we're not getting any younger. To the drama in Bahama and the rumble in the jungle. A chiller and a thriller and the thriller in Manila. From Malala and Lilibeth, the former whose son almost set in the SWAT district from an assassin's bullet, the latter Her Royal Majesty, whose empire the son, it was said, never set. Two, the exquisite beauty of our expansive, expanding and majestic universe. Whatever takes your fancy, there's something for everyone right here, right now. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sotonye Fiesimama. This is Today in History for January 30th. Coming up in today's Today in History, just as I promised yesterday, we're going to feature Harvard's first African-American graduate. So who do you think this was? Also, Gandhi is going to be featured. Yeah, there are quite a few Gandhis, but yeah, this is the most famous one. Washington, D.C.'s first female mayor. Um, don't know if you know who that is. I guess most of you watching this don't know. So that will be revealed today. And of course, lots more. So let's get cracking. We will start with the year 1844. Born on this day was this man pictured here. His name was Richard Theodore Greener. Richard Theodore Greener is important in history because he was the first African American to graduate to graduate from Harvard University. Now, for those of you who do not know, Harvard University has been ranked consistently as the number one university on the planet. So it's where all the clever clocks go, essentially. I mean, yeah, it, sometimes it slips from its first position, but I think over the last 20 years, Harvard has probably been number one more times than any other university. So Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, um, Charlie University in the United States. Now, Duke is quite good. I don't think Duke has ever hit number one. MIT is also quite good. Um, but yeah, Harvard... Oxford and Cambridge, these are the three elite universities, top three universities in the world. So again, you know, the reason I highlight this guy is the, the certain beliefs in certain quarters that people of certain races are not as intelligent as people from other races. So this disproves, this is one of the, you know, facts that disproves that theory. You know, people have um, used that as a, a valid reason for being racist. You know, it's, it's absolutely not true. You know, we all have, we, we bleed the same blood. Our brains are essentially the same. Yes, in some places where people are malnourished, obviously intelligence levels will differ from those who are, are well catered for. If you, if you have the right environment, you're going to thrive, irrespective of your race. If you have the wrong environment, irrespective of your race, you're not going to do as well. Okay, so again, Richard Theodore Greener was born on this day in 1844. He went on to become the dean of the Howard University School of Law. So he was a, a lawyer, Richard Theodore Grant. And at the bottom of this picture, he was of the class of 1870, Harvard College class of 1870. So again, Richard Theodore Greener, the first African-American to graduate from Harvard University 
he graduated in 1870, as you saw a few seconds ago. He was born on this day in 1844. In 1882, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, pictured here, was born. President of the United States, he was born in Hyde Park. Hyde Park is in New York. He sadly died on the 12th of April, 1945, at the age of 63. He died in Warm Springs, Georgia. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, president, former president of the United States, born on this day, in 1882. 1911, on this day 1911, American trumpeter Roy Eldridge, one of the great creative musicians of the 1930s, was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. American trumpeter pictured here, Roy Eldridge, one of the great creative musicians of the 1930s, was born on this day in 1911. Also, Born on this day, exactly 30 years later, was Dick Cheney, politician from the United States, held various government offices, most notably the U.S. Vice Presidency from 2001 to 2009. So for those of you who are around or who remember or who have read their history, he was the Vice President of President George Bush, or the, the younger Bush. He was Vice President to George Bush. Junior. Also, on this day in 1944, this lady pictured here, Sharon Pratt Dixon, was born. She was the elected mayor of Washington, D.C. from January 2nd, 1991 to January 2nd, 1995, making her the first woman of any race to do so and the first African-American woman to serve as mayor of a major American city. Sharon Pratt Dixon, now Sharon Pratt Kelly, and I believe now she's dropped the Kelly name as well for obvious reasons. She was born on this day in 1944. Elected mayor of Washington, D.C. She also was the first woman of any race to become mayor of any major American city. 1948. This man here sadly was assassinated on this day. His name is Mahatma Gandhi. He was an Indian leader considered the father of his country and internationally esteemed for his doctrine of non-violent protest, which is called Satya Graha. So non-violent protest to achieve political and social progress. Again, he was assassinated on this day in 1948. As a man of peace, Great Soul was called Great Soul. Sadly, assassinated on this day. So even those who advocate peaceful protests um, also get assassinated. That's the way of the world, you know. That's the way of the world, sadly. 1959, on this day, this lady Grammy Award winning singer, Jodie Waitley, was born in Chicago, Illinois. To date, Whitley has sold over 20 million albums and singles worldwide. He is known for such hits as Looking for a New Love, Don't You Want Me, and Real Love. Jody Whitley, born on this day in 1959. Happy birthday, Jody Whitley. Next, also born on this day, Three years later is this man pictured here. His name is Abdallah II. He is the King of Jordan, reigning since the 7th of February 1999. As a member of the Hashemite dynasty, the royal family of Jordan, since 1921, he is the 41st generation direct descendant of Muhammad. Abdallah was born in Amman as the first child of King Hussein of Jordan and his second wife, British-born Princess Muna. So happy birthday, Abdallah II, King of Jordan. He has reigned since the 7th of February 1999, member of the Hashemite dynasty, the royal family of Jordan, since 1921. 41st generation direct descendant of the Prophet Muhammad. On this day, in 1972, a demonstration by Roman Catholic civil rights supporters in Londonderry 
also called Derry, Northern Ireland, turned violent when British paratroopers opened fire, killing 13 and injuring 14 others. One of the injured later died, hence the number of crosses you can see here. Um, so 14 people were killed on this day called Bloody Sunday. It says the day innocents died. Um, this precipitated an upsurge in support for the Irish Republican Army. Understandably so, you know, people were very angry and um, started enlisting the Irish Republican Army. Um, yeah, no one likes conflict, no one likes war, most people don't. I'm sure there's some crazy people out there who enjoy seeing other people suffer. Uh, but I believe that most people, most of humanity are decent, peace-loving people. But sadly, things go wrong sometimes and um, sometimes force has to be applied so that peace can reign. Okay, I'm going to show you some more pictures now of um, events on this day. More pictures. Um, yeah. I guess the picture says, says it all. Protests. People are livid. Last but not least, a poster for a film, I believe, unfilmed the Paul Greengrass. So a film by Paul Greengrass, I believe that's the, the meaning. Um, yeah, so. Lord is Sunday. Okay. Last but not least, the year was 1995. It's another um, sad story. Not as bad as Bloody Sunday, though. Flooding forced the evacuation of more than 100,000 people from low-lying areas of the Netherlands. That happened on this day in 1995. Flooding forced the evacuation of more than 100,000 people from low-lying areas of the Netherlands. So do you live in the Netherlands? Drop me a comment in the comment section below. Have you experienced this before? Um, I haven't really experienced any serious flooding in my life. You know, I've seen you know, localized flooding here and there. But serious flooding, never experienced that in my life. I don't know what it's like. It must be horrendous. It must be really bad. You know, people having to take canoes out and dinghies and whatever just to rescue people, especially the elderly and the vulnerable and the very young. It's, um, it does lead to um, catastrophe fatalities as well. People die from these um, events. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm um, going to call it wraps. Thanks for dropping by. But before you go anywhere, in tomorrow's Today in History, the first spacecraft on the moon will be featured. Pan Am Flight 103, also something about it today. There was also an Austrian composer who will be featured tomorrow, and a few more. Don't miss out. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for watching my video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Share as well to your social media platforms, family and friends. Consider subscribing as well so that you receive updates of my video uploads. See you tomorrow, January 31st. Stay safe. Bye-bye.